ahead and use the uh, raise hand feature. We'll open it straight to questions. <coughs> Bob, go ahead and start us off. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate it. Um, hey, man, how's it going? Um, hey, I just I know you guys get everybody's best shot, and, and the, you always pack the arenas on the road, but wondering if you've watched some Arkansas's game like against Auburn and Tennessee, they had pretty rabid crowds. Kind of, kind of what do you guys expect? And, and what, what's, and I guess are you guys uh, pretty used to that on the road now? Uh, I'd say we're pretty accustomed to it at this point on the road. Um, you know, that, that's been the story of, of Kentucky basketball traveling in the SEC for for years now. So, um, you know, we got a glimpse of of, of the Auburn game and, and, and we've seen some tape on them. And, uh, we expect it to be an electric environment and um, a sold out crowd with, with a ton of students and, and a lot of enthusiasm. So uh, the good thing is we're, we're prepared for that. We we faced that uh, and we've got some some good experience with that. So. We're looking forward to the challenge, I'd say. Okay. Thank you. Sure. John Hale. Kellen, whenever Sabir and Tai Tai do come back, what did you guys learn the last two games that can help you when you are full strength? Uh, I mean, we, we've showed that we can find ways to be productive and, and win without those guys. Um, so when we're able to get them back, uh, it, that would just add, add to our team and make us even better. I mean, for most of the season, we've had those two guys, and we've been uh, evidently a, a very, very good team. And in the last two games, we, we had to show some some toughness and, and some real resilience, especially coming from behind in, in both of those games and, and finding different ways to uh, to score points and then get in the lane. Um, and collectively, I think we've done a, a really good job stepping up. Um, so we're excited about having our, our full unit together again. Yeah, Kellen, I hope I can ask too. Uh, how did your role change, if at all, with Tai Tai and Sabir not available? Well, it definitely changed. Uh, I'm not sprinting to the corner. I'm having to uh and then playing off those guys i'm having to initiate a lot of the offense and, and, and get the ball over half court and, and let us play um from there and uh on defense i'm, I'm guarding the one or the two as opposed to the, the two or the three um so it, it it's been it's definitely been different in the last couple of games a bit of an adjustment um but you know, we had someone had to have stepped up, and uh, those those duties were left to, to Davion and I. And uh, you know, thankfully, we were able to come out victorious the last two games. Was that uh, just to follow up on, on that, that? Was that, that a good, good thing to change things up? You know what I mean, kind of as a refreshing sort of thing, or would you rather kind of have that definite role and just keep working on perfecting that? Uh, well, I'd say we did what we did the last two games at, at a necessity. I think it's pretty clear when those two um, are playing that uh, I will not be playing point guard. Um, and I mean, there, there's perks to both sides. Uh, you know, I was able to get in the paint um, a little more and, and throw some lobs, get get to my floaters, and, and get all the way to the rim sometimes, which is something I don't necessarily do as much um, when those two are in the game. Um, but like I said, I, I think that it was out of necessity the last couple of games. And when we get our full team back and uh, I'm playing uh, my role and perhaps with a, with a couple more drives per game, just getting that experience the last couple of games and, and getting in the paint, uh, I think can only help us. But uh, I like I like my role. Daryl, Daryl, Yeah, Kellen, um, Bryce came on big the other day and Damian before that. How I don't know if you've ever had to go through that much, but how hard is it to sit there and wait your turn game after game and keep yourself up and ready? 
it's an incredibly challenging, uh, especially given what are we, 27, 28 games into the year. Um, and we were shorthanded, and, and, and Bryce had an opportunity, and he uh, took advantage of it incredibly well. It was uh, uber, uber productive for us. And, and uh, it started with, with the little things. You know, he got some offensive rebounds. He um, got to see the ball going a couple times to the free throw line, and then it opened up the rest of his game. So, I mean, he was sensational for us the other night. Uh, I think he was a difference in the game. I think without Bryce's spark, we may not have won that game. So uh, just credit to Bryce for for being patient, for understanding that um, this, this is a team and, and Cal puts the five guys on the court that will fight. Um, and he, he definitely was, was one of those guys on, on Wednesday night. Yeah. Um, so he was awesome. And then Damian... At Alabama, I think it was he only played nine or ten minutes, but he he was also a, a huge difference maker in the game. So uh, I think a lot of that also has to do with the way we practice. We keep an emphasis on all of our all of our guys, not just the guys starting and playing a lot of minutes. And everyone is continuously held accountable. And, and when your opportunity presents itself, it's uh, there is an opportunity there to take advantage of it. And, and Bryce and Damian have, have definitely done that. And, and so is Dante when we played Mississippi State. I mean, he was awesome in that game and made some big plays. So we've seen time and time again that that guys have, have the willingness and, and the preparation to step up when a number is called. Tyler Thompson? So Kellen, you know, senior day is coming up on Tuesday. And in your college career, you've had the opportunity to play for two great coaches in Bob McKillop and John Calipari. I was wondering if you could compare their coaching styles and maybe tell us what the most valuable lessons you learned from them are. Putting me on the spot here, huh? Um, they, they definitely uh, have different coaching styles. Uh, Coach McKillop's run a, a system-oriented offense with, with principles for – 33 years, and he's had a lot of success with it. Um, credit to how well Davidson's doing this year as, as well. Um, and uh, Coach Cal is, he's got his style. It's more dribble drive oriented players making plays. Um, but the, the exceptional thing about both of them is, is they have a standard, and there's no shortcutting that standard, and you're always going to be held to account, no matter if you're number one on the depth chart or you're the uh you're the 13th guy and i think that's what's allowed them to both be successful and coach three decades in this sport at the college level um i mean I, i've learned a lot of lessons from from both of them uh just in, in my time at davidson and in my time here so i i'm not going to try to pinpoint one and potentially leave out a better lesson but uh Playing for both both of these coaches has been a, a, a wonderful experience for me, and I've learned a lot. I've learned how to be held accountable, uh, how to how to fulfill a, a discipline oriented coach's uh, wishes and tasks, and, and I've been very grateful. I think. John Long, Cal and Coach Cal always talks about doing the little things right. And one of the big things with you is, is shooting and making shots. But what are some of the little things that we need to be looking for that uh, maybe you uh, you feel the most proud that you've been able to accomplish this year? I think uh, I've, I've defended well this year um, in most games. And I think a, a, a little thing that sometimes goes unnoticed is uh, – I, th I think my being in the right spot on defense has allowed me to avoid foul trouble and, and, and foul at a really low rate, which um, allows me to stay on the court. Um, and I, I think another thing is I, I try to you mention the details. I try to be pretty detail oriented and, and simply just do what's asked of me, whether that's making open shots or, or making the next pass or um, helping on a, on a, on defensive assignment, I, I, I try to do the little things and do the little things you tend to stay on the court um, because then you become trustworthy and you don't 
you know, piss off coach. So that's always, that's always good. Yeah, uh, Kellen, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I'm, I'm wondering about the uh, process of uh, playing without uh, severe and tie tie and how it's helped you um, to, to maybe have your kind of offensive game you expect to have, even if the three point shot is not part of it. And if, if there's something of value there, you know, going into the tournament where you may face some opponents who can kind of run you off the three point line at times. Yeah. Well, without those, without Xavier and Ty Ty in the game, it puts pressure on uh, us as guards to, you got, someone's got to make plays and someone's got to get in the paint and, or someone's got to start the dribble drive by making the right pass uh, to allow the next, the next guy to drive. And uh, LSU did a, said a couple of times now, LSU did a, a really good job, I thought, uh, of limiting my, my three-point looks and, and running me off the line. Um, when the ball's in your hands more, that, that gives you opportunities to, to either uh, let them work harder than you and, and keep you from getting shots off or take advantage of those and drive those hard closeouts and get in the paint and shoot some floaters, uh, throw some lobs, or, or get all the way to the rim. So um, just the opportunity and... and, and and having the ball more, uh, I think, provided those opportunities and kept me from uh, kept an off shooting night from from allowing me to to kind of just get lost in the game. So um, again, it's it's been that it's been that necessity, and then uh, we've had to step up. So three more: Christos, John, and Jerry. Then we need to get Cal in here. Hey, Kellen, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you compare yourself with, from the beginning of the season until now, what did you see as the biggest growth on your game and how this process and uh, to be in crunch time to take more responsibilities help you to get the winning mentality as a player? Uh, I'd say the the nickname I earned about a couple of weeks ago, Steady Eddie, has been my, my biggest... Um, I guess improvement is I think for the most part, you know what you're going to get from me. And I've been relatively consistent where I think in non-conference in, in November, December, um, it was a little up in the air. Uh, and I, I think that that's allowed us to, to be a better team. And it's, it's given me the confidence to, to go out and, and, and play my role every, every day and um, just do what I can to help us win. John, go ahead. Well, and obviously you've got another game before then, but can you just compare a little bit the emotions of going through a senior day at Davidson after four years versus going through one here after one year? It's, it's obviously a different situation, but something we're seeing more of in this age of the transfer portal. Yeah, my second senior night. How about that? Um, but it, there's obviously a, a huge difference, and you, you go through four years at a at, at a college and, and different rosters, different – you've played – multiple you go through multiple senior nights you you have different senior leaders for three out of your four years at, at, at a school where you're where you're at for four years like like i did at davidson um we had we had uh, a bunch of we had a couple 21 seasons we had one just over 500 and we had a, a season plagued by a pandemic and and uh, you know I, I, we went through a lot as as a group at, at davidson and um so there's a little bit of a different level of appreciation just because you have four years of experience and you play with multiple teammates, um, some, some new assistants, et cetera. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be just as um, as meaningful um, this Tuesday. You know, this has been an exceptional year for us. We, we, we've, we've cracked the top five. We've had a lot of success. We've had some statement wins. Uh, and, and you're playing on the biggest stage of college basketball at, at a blue blood. So, you know, one, I'm, I'm grateful to be here, and um, I'm definitely excited about having a senior night in Rupp and experiencing that with my parents and um, doing it at a place like Kentucky. Jerry, finish us off. Yeah, Kellen, I'm going to remember the importance of not pissing off the coach, by the way. Uh, Arkansas's big guy has a knack for taking charges. How does that play in, on, on the players' minds and the planning for the game? 
Well, the good thing about us is we shoot a lot of floaters. And, um, you know, frankly, now that if I really think about it, how many charges have been called against us this year? Uh, I think very, very few. We, we're, we're trained to, to uh, there's a layup, there's a layup, and you, and you go get all the way to the rim and shoot the layup. If not, we a lot of us shoot floaters, and if the big helps up and they negate the floater, then we throw up to the rim and we have, we have lob finishers. So uh, it's definitely something to be cognizant of, uh, but I wouldn't say it's something that we're going to drill heavily uh, to avoid or, or, or harp on beyond um, just simply being aware of it. the raised hand feature and we'll open it straight to questions. Daryl, get us going. Yeah, John, you recently told us that uh, fresh minds and fresh legs win in the end. Yet because of the injuries, you've been playing guys, five guys close to 40 minutes. Is there a concern there, the balance there? Well, the fresh lot, legs and minds are not just two games a week. It's what are you doing with all the other time, which is probably more than what you're doing with the games. When I coached at uh, UMass and we were playing five and six guys, we just had really shortened versions of practice. Um, our thing yesterday was an hour and we didn't do anything at each other. It was more of a cerebral on the court, do some shooting, here we go. Today will be a little different. Back then I was practicing an hour and 15, 20 minutes because we got what we needed in the games. I think this team needs a little bit more than that because we're trying to get other guys ready who may be not playing as much. But it's it all is the same. Fresh minds, fresh bodies, fresh 
here we go. You know, excited about the next game. Um, but it's what I try to do every year. But it's different. The, in 2014, our practices were three hours at this time. I started five freshmen. If you remember, we struggled until the tournament, tweaked a couple things, and all of a sudden we went on a run. But we needed more work. We needed to be in the gym more. Um, hey, John, how you doing? Um, good, good. You know, Eric Musman was saying, you know, two years ago when you guys had the big comeback after you got tossed, um, that maybe Arkansas, the players weren't emotionally ready to handle that, they were a little too amped up. Now he feels like, you know, you look at them beating Auburn, beating Tennessee, they're, they're maybe better mentally. I don't know if you can discern this from watching them on tape, but do they look like a mature uh, team? And I guess what, what are you expecting from them c coming into this environment? Um, well, first of all, what I've seen, um, they, they will scramble up the game, but they never really seem to be out of control. So they're disciplined in what they're doing. Um, they're running motion and curl cuts and, you know, spin cuts and back doors and all the stuff that they're doing, but there's some organization to it. Yet, whether it's offense or defense, they'll scramble up the game a little bit. Um, they play really hard. They don't go let go of the rope at any point in any game I've watched. Um, you know, I watched the Alabama game. They never stopped. They just gave themselves a chance. And, uh, um, you know, whether it be what happened with Tennessee and how hard they play, they just, they're, they're not going to beat themselves. You got to go in there and you got to beat them. And it's really hard to do. I was wondering what, what Baylor and Washington's status, status is for this game, but thanks. I don't know. I have not seen them today. On that point. Everybody's having a little fun with the I haven't seen them thing with injury updates. Can you just explain a little bit? What is your process with your medical staff and getting updates on guys? I know you probably don't want the opponent to know what, what's going on, but how do you handle all those things? That I, I am not like if they don't play, they don't play. I mean, I'm not. They may call me the night before and won't call me. They text me and say, uh, we're, we're going to see in the morning if he's available. Right now, I have not met with our trainer. I have not seen either kid. Uh, I'll know before we start that they're going to go practice, and then we'll practice. And if they don't practice, we'll practice and get ready for the game. I mean, you know, when it's day-to-day, -day, I'm not going to force a kid to play. Now, there may be a point where I say, you know what? I'm not going to let you play today. You just you need more rest. Let's go. Um, but. You know, it's uh, it's a combination of all that stuff. Oscar's talked a lot about how much he loves contact. Uh, I'm curious, you know, from your perspective, how unique his mindset is uh, kind of going and getting the ball and, and how physically he makes the game. He's got a seven foot four wingspan. And he's got a body that's 255 pounds with 4%, 6% body fat. That makes him different. Um, he rebounds. You ready for this? For some reason, they find him. You know why? He attempts to rebound. So when you don't attempt to rebound because it's too physical, because you got bumped, accepting the block out. You go to get blocked out, you just lean on the guy. You won't believe this. You're not going to rebound. If you attempt to rebound, you attempt to avoid the block out, you have a chance to rebound. And then if you're 255 pounds with 4% body fat and your arms are seven foot four and you got big hands and you've been taught to rebound with two hands, everything with two hands, you have a chance to get a lot of rebounds. John, one of the most frustrating things for us in watching the games now are these incessant replay reviews. Has your opinion of those changed at all? And maybe more importantly, what are you doing to kind of leverage that extra time in coaching your team? Not trying to leverage it. It's frustrating. And I, I would tell you that um, if you wonder why I went crazy the other game is because 
everybody saw the slap in the face. We all saw it. TV saw it. Camera crew saw it. What took you three minutes? And then you go meet with the coach. My guy's at the free throw line waiting to shoot a free throw. And you're having a dialogue about whatever. It couldn't have been that play because it was a face slap. That's why I got upset. Let's play. Let's go. Let's play. And never, and all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. It wasn't me questioning anything. It was just, let's go. Speed this thing up. Part of it was my guy was shooting a free throw. After waiting five minutes, what did he do with the free throw? He missed it. So you're right. Needs to be done quicker. Needs to meet with both coaches. It's a four-second cut. This is what happened. Here's the call. We're not discussing. Let's go. Boom. Let's go play. Yeah, uh, Cal, in the LSU game, we saw Kellen have a productive offensive game without relying on the, the three-point shot very much. I'm kind of wondering if the situation uh, without Tata and Severe, the, the value in him learning to play that way. Uh, being forced to play that way almost. He and Davion both have been trained as point guards, so they they know the position. They know how to play it. They're just not as fast as Sabir, and they're not as crafty as Ty Ty. But they can play the position. The issue becomes 40 minutes. That becomes an issue. And, um, you know, but you, you do what you do. Uh, instead of strategic timeouts, I'm calling a timeout before a TV timeout to give those two extra break. So I may call it at 1230 and everybody says, why would he have called a timeout when in 30 seconds there was another one? That's why, because in 30 seconds there was another one. Now all of a sudden they get two, three minutes to catch their breath before they have to go out again. So, you know, you have to do some things a little different if you're going to leave them on the floor. And I've tried to do some subbing, but you're watching the game just like I am. Doesn't go well. So you have to leave them in. Yeah, John, I was talking to Dan Issel recently about Oscar's rebound. He kind of said he has Wes Unseld's tenacity and Paul Silas's instincts. I'm wondering how rare is that instinct to know where the ball is going to come off as soon as it's released almost. Well, it, I think they're, they're, you know, uh, that's a heck of a compliment, by the way, for the, for him to say that. And, uh, but I would say, are you, and I'm going after this ball or the first time I'm touched, I'm stopping and I have an excuse. You know, I mean, this kid, it goes after every single ball. And he puts his hands up in the air and he jumps. Why at times I get upset, he gets whacked like crazy. And you're all watching it just like me. And then it, it's, well, his hands are up, but his body touched the guy. That's a foul on him. You just, you know, look, you, you, it can't be one way. Just if you're calling them all, call them all. If you're letting them go, let them go. And we will all figure it out how we have to play the game. But he's a kid that, just you say like a nose for the ball. Well, that's rebound attempts. Now, if I, I don't know if you know, because you guys don't really know rules or anything, but do you know that when they block out facing him, you do know that's a foul, right? So if the shot goes up and the guy goes to block him out like that, <clears throat> facing him, that is an automatic foul. If two guys get it, you take your choice who you call it on, but it's an automatic foul. They can put their butt on them. They can turn. That's a block out. That is a foul. Automatic foul. So as you watch the game, you kind of get the gist of, okay, how are they trying to keep this kid away from the goal? They got to do something. The best thing you can do, do you want me to give you a secret? And I don't want you to tell anybody. Recruit a guy that's 255 pounds with seven foot wingspan, seven four, that goes after the ball. You recruit that guy. The other stuff, I know you're trying. We have to. He's too big and all that. And that's why I just say, hey, call the game. 
It's his advantage. Call the game. Yeah, John, I hope I can ask too. Uh, our, as you know, Arkansas's a big guy, Jalen Williams, has a knack for taking charge as he's very kind of a thinking man's player. What advice or what challenge is that for Oscar? Charger a block or flop or, you know, I mean, he he doesn't lower his shoulder. It's not how he plays. And you just have to count on people knowing, is that a charge, a block, or is it a flop? But I'll say this. He has really improved. He's gotten so much better. Uh, skill with the ball, ability to shoot. Um, you know, he's he's really gotten better. Really impressed with him. And Dylan was on here earlier, and he was talking about Senior Day Tuesday. How uh, how would you describe the impact he's made this year? How should he be remembered? Hmm. I mean. You know, here's a young man that gave everything he could to this program and was a great, great teammate. And I've said this before, good good teams have good players. Great teams have great teammates. And he is a great teammate. I could say the same thing about Davion. They've given everything to this team. If If they have to score or they get it going fine, if someone else does, those two were the first two to go after Bryce and hug him and laugh and be happy. The same with Damian, the same with Keon. I mean, when, when he had his big game. So, I mean, I, I think again, we've been fortunate that he decided that he wanted to come here for that last year. And, uh, hopefully he looks at it and says he was fortunate too, because that's how this is supposed to work. It's supposed to benefit him as a player and it's supposed to benefit the program. Coach, hope you're doing well, first of all. Uh, speaking about Kellen's uh, season so far and the progress that he made as the season goes on, game by game, uh, what and the, uh, the, the responsibilities that he, take, that he took on the games, what does it speak for you? What does it mean about his progress, about his, uh, his work ethic and more? How And what is his ceiling from your perspective? Well, the other, the other thing is he's had some injuries that he's played through. That's mental toughness. Like, he was going, he's like, hey, I'm getting a chance to start and play at Kentucky. I'm not taking days off. Are you crazy? He would not take a day off. Second thing, very intelligent. He's made suggestions in the games that are like he's coaching. And uh, so he's really, he works at it. He's focused. He's, he's engaged. He has a laser focus on game planning. And he's able to talk his teammates through stuff. It's like having another coach on the floor.